moving more Thunder players. Lesson 2 is going to be over maneuvering without stalling and how to get out of a stall if you enter one. In this example we are going to be in a FW-190A5 just because it's a plane that's easy to stall and it'll make a good impression. So we're out flying and let's say we start to enter combat with enemy planes. As you know, flying your plane as effectively as possible means you're going to have to take some risks and fly it as close to the line as possible without crashing. But for this example, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to pause the test flight. We're going to go to the options and our sound. And we are going to turn the engine volume all the way down. So now all you can hear is the wind. This is important because sound plays a huge role in flying your aircraft in War Thunder. Okay, we're going to crank the engine up and we're going to enter a turn. Now I want you to listen as we turn. The tighter I turn, the more you're going to hear wind as it starts to escape under the wings, causing you to stall. Tighter and tighter. Did you hear that? Did you hear that whooshing sound as the wind started to leave the wings? We were moving at a high enough speed that a flat spin luckily didn't occur but we did end up st uh, stalling a little bit and rotating over. Now you heard the wind start to whoosh over the wings. Depending on the situation, that means you are about to stall, or it means a stall is a split second away and you started to pull too hard on the, st on the stick. So let's say we're in a more realistic fight situation. The dogfight's been going on for a little bit. We don't have a whole lot of speed left. We're both running a little low on energy. So we're down on speed and we're doing a tight turn and we're going to try to keep it as tight as we can without stalling. You can hear the wind noise, that means we're close to a stall. Our plane is shaking from the unpredictability of the wind. Oh, we stalled a little bit there. Just knowing where the line is by practicing is how you're going to be able to ride the line and not stall your plane and flat spin. So basically if you're turning and you haven't fallen out of the sky and you can hear this noise, don't turn any tighter or you will fall out of the sky. Also these white contrails on the side of your wings, if you feel so inclined to look over when your plane starts to make this, it means your plane is cutting through the air about as best as it can and it's going to fall out of the sky soon if you pull much tighter. So let's say the worst happens, we're low on speed, we're doing a tight turn and someone's just in our gun sight, so we turn as tight as we can. And we've entered a stall. So to get out of a stall, you center the stick as much as possible. Point the tail in the opposite direction of the spin, and all you can do is hope. And it looks like... Okay, yeah, we've exited the stall. We're going to go down for a second and gain some speed. Gently pull up on the stick. There we go, we got out of that stall. Now keep in mind, when you enter a flat spin like that, there's no guarantee you're going to come out. The faster you catch it, the better. The more rough on the stick you are and the more whipping and throwing it around you do, the more likely you are to stall. So let's say I'm being chased by an enemy. Imagine there's an enemy back there. You can intentionally throw your plane into a stall. Now this is dangerous for the obvious reason of you could not recover and you could crash your plane, but it's also dangerous because it's going to really slow that plane down and the plane on your tail that may or may not be catching you is going to catch you and may have a good shot at you but if it is successful you've got a pretty good chance of coming out on his tail and if he's already on your tail and you're running away in a straight line if he's gonna catch you there's not much you can really do so you might as well throw caution to the wind and try it so we're gonna try an example here oh, pardon me okay I'm just gonna yank the stick to the absolute closest and to the right I can. I'm going to apply right rudder at the same time. There we go, we've stalled. I applied left rudder. 
There we go. We stalled, and we've just dropped over two, uh, over 100 miles an hour from our airplane in mere seconds. It's going to be impossible for our chaser to do that without stalling himself. He will get a good amount of chances to fire at us if he misses those shots, which is a little easier to do because that plane is stalling and acting quite strangely. You might be able to get onto his tail. If he's smart, however, he will keep his energy advantage and things might go right back to where they are. But there's always a chance that you can turn the tables with that. And if you're in a situation where you find that this might be an option, it might be your only option. Okay, now we are flying out in a Spitfire, just for a proof of concept to show that you can recover a stall with the same technique in any aircraft. So we're going to pretend that we are chasing a 109, he's going to be right up in front of us, we're going to enter a tight turn. Pretty tight, let's say he's just ahead of us and we get too aggressive. Okay, we've entered a stall. Gonna give it left rudder. Okay, gain speed. And gently pull out. Oh, a little more gently than that. There we go. Pretty much any plane can be stalled, and pretty much any plane can be recovered with that technique. Remember, all you have to do is just basically let go of the control stick and only apply rudder. And then it may take a little bit, but you will eventually come out of that stall. So, my suggestion to you would be to go on a test flight or two with your airplane, figure out at what speeds it'll stall and what speeds it won't, figure out what you can do, what you can't do, get used to your aircraft a little bit, and then I would head out to an enduring confrontation and fly your plane out and just get used to it. The more you fly it, the more you get used to it, the more you know off of instinct rather than thinking, the faster you can make decisions and maneuvers, and the better you can get, and the more kills you can get. And these tips are going to help you when I start to cover dogfighting and close air support. And speaking of close air support, that is going to be our next lesson. So until that next lesson, I will be seeing you. Thanks for watching.